And these people think that none of us know what they do. And it's pretty hard to miss. Uh, well, I know that you have a leader named David Linton, L-Y-N-T-O-N, Cameron. It's funny, when he got caught doing something his family wouldn't be proud of, he deleted his last name. And in the police report, it said David Linton. Okay, great. Uh, Sam Sheffield, or what's her name? Samantha? Cameron? Uh, I don't know where she was on 9-11, but she used to hang around raves, and she really liked a singer named Tricky. And Tricky was in New York City on 9-11. Uh, I believe the prince that you're most proud of, Andrew. I think. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> I was hoping somebody would not. I, that way, I know she's awake. Yeah, your uh, your fine prince, Andrew, who hangs around with billionaire pedophiles. Uh, what great leadership you have! And I'm not pointing the finger because ours is worse. Of course, on the other hand, ours has the CUKC passport, so it's right back at you, I guess. But uh, also on 9-11, you may be familiar with the name of Sarah Ferguson. Yes. She has little bitty dolls because she just loves children. And she has these little dolls called Little Red. You know, it's really amazing that when the World Trade Centers burned on 9-11, that all the people perished, all the concrete turned into pyro... I, I'm not smart. Pyroplastic dust? Thank you. The steel turned into molten steel that was still molten a week or ten days later. And yet Sarah Ferguson's little red doll, named Little Red, somehow survived that conflagration and brought some more attention to her. Uh, and apparently some people like that type of attention, but it's my job and it's my pleasure to try to fill in the blanks on who's who among the British and other leadership that was either where they shouldn't be on 9-11, like in New York City of watching. And let me, I've, I've been sort of hard on the English, but now let me be hard on the Americans. When I'm talking about watching, there were people that knew the attack was coming, and they got ringside seats, and I've mentioned some English people. Uh, some Americans that got ringside seats were airborne in two different airplanes, and I'll speak slowly because I know it's laborious to listen to Yankee English. There's an airplane that President Bill Clinton took away from the Air Force and gave to FEMA, Foxtrot Echo Mike Alpha, FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency. I'm going to speak as an individual and I don't want this reflected on this meeting, this is just me. It's my opinion that FEMA doesn't manage emergencies, they participate in planning emergencies. <laughs> Let's see how much you like that treatment of British companies. How about BBC? Their lady reporter with Building 7 behind her said, and now Building 7 has collapsed, and suddenly the screen goes blank because these BBC boneheads, and I'll give you a name, Greg Dyke. I don't know if anybody knows Greg Dyke. Yeah. Thank you, BBC, for not telling us the plan of our, the attack on 9-11, but you guys know it. We're coming for you. BBC, you're in big trouble. I hate the word, uh, what is that word? When someone, oh yeah, prejudice. I don't want to sound like I'm prejudiced against England or BBC, so let me tell you who else we're coming for. Uh, when the poor people of Haiti were earthquaked, and I didn't say heart, although I think I could. When they were earthquaked about a year ago, it's very interesting timing. It's almost like BBC were involved, but this time it wasn't. It was the United States relief effort. Is there anyone in this room that knows when the relief effort showed up at the Haiti earthquake? 24 hours early. I want him to stand up and face the crowd and yell. 24 hours early. Okay, folks. How <laughs> can you get to an earthquake 24 hours early unless you planned it? <laughs> How can BBC say Building 7 
has gone down 20 minutes before it goes down unless they were privy. Oh, privy. Is there a privy council in this country? Is that <laughs> no, in this country, privy is some place you go to get rid of things. <laughs> I think we need to get rid of some government officials at this point. The Queen's Privy Councillor is Evelyn Rothschild. I know about eight people in this room, and there might be ten that know me because of what I write. But you know, I don't have to know you to know you've got a brain, and you've also got the willingness to speak, and so many don't. And you know, uh, there's people in this room that cannot speak, but folks, I can speak for you, and if I offend you, just tell me not to speak for you. But until people tell me to shut up and go away, Every single innocent person around the globe, and there's seven billion of us, um, I have been led, L-E-D, to do just what I did for Holly Greek, which is encourage people to tell them there is a force more powerful than the bankers that started with R&R, &R. and notice I didn't say Rothschild and Rockefeller, so don't accuse me. Uh, the little people in the world are not going to be abandoned by whoever it was that created us. We are not. It isn't going to happen. And it's high time that we who are alert, awake, who are healthy enough, who have the luxury of time, most of you people in this room are one of three things. Your students, your overworked workers worried about your retirement and the continuation of your income, or your pensioners who are probably on fixed income and your expenses go up as your income goes down. Is there any other person that I failed to is everybody in one of those three groups? So. Well, you're the enemy. That's, that's who they want to get. They want to get the students misled. They want to get the workers tired. And they want to get the pensioners sick. Because all they want is units of labor for as long as we're strong enough and foolish enough to be bridled by the bankers. And I don't want you to think for a minute that I was smart enough to escape. But when I started talking about the truth of 9-11, I was purged. And they really thought they were doing the right thing, and they really didn't. Because the way the airlines work in the United States of America is if you come up with a safety, in fact, here comes the mother load. Uh, if you come up with a safety-related issue that the airlines or someone higher than the airlines, like the United States Department of Justice, if they don't want these types of messages coming out, they'll get your attention. First, they'll say, Come over here, I want you to retract that statement. Now in my case, these guys were foolish enough to do that in writing. And I've got it. So I've got people that are in positions of authority over me that ostensibly are responsible for safety. And I raised the biggest safety issue in the history of airlines. And I'm going to give it to you. It's four pieces. Boeing Uninterruptible Autopilot. You can Google that and you'll find out what it is. In fact, I got a compliment England. Here's a great big hug, England. Thank you, England, for being the location where, for whatever reason, Boeing Aircraft Company announced four days after I sued them that they have something called the Boeing Uninterruptible Autopilot. Once again, red and black. In fact, you're wearing red and black. Thank you. If you get the wires hooked up right, the Boeing Uninterruptible Autopilot will protect all of us from those nasty Muslims who want to kill us. Or if it's a Muslim airline from those nasty Christians who want to wrongfully kill them. But the Boeing Uninterruptible Autopilot was deployed on 9-11, and not for a beneficial reason, but it controlled all four of the airliners, and let's be specific, American 11, American 77, let's stop there, that was my college classmate, Captain Chick Burlingame was the captain of Flight 77. So in addition to wanting to be an advocate for Holly Grigg, I have to fight for the memory, the legacy, and the truth for Captain Chick Burlingame, who did not lose control of his airliner. He did not have somebody come into the cockpit. The airliner was taken over by technology, and I'll give you the other pieces of technology, and then I'll probably go sideways again, because that's what I do. I have no notes. They told me to ditch the notes. Boeing uninterruptible autopilot. <coughs> Boeing and the Airline Pilots Association on the 2nd of February, excuse me, the second month, which is February, February 27th of 07. Four days later, on March 3rd, 07, Boeing Aircraft Corporation published in the UK Guardian. Is there such a paper? Yes. My mind still works. 
especially when I'm nervous, like Cameron and Sarkozy are going to get me. <laughs> Come over to Plum City, we'll chat. Uh, anyway, Boeing, bless their hearts, uh, they had been coerced into having these, or allowing these aircraft to be modified. And I did not say Boeing did it willingly, they did not. Uh, but the airline, the airliners, and I mentioned United uh, 175, United 93, American 11, American 77, all four of those airliners were upside down, meaning that what's supposed to protect you is now working against you. The, all of those airplanes, uh, the passengers, the crew, and the patsies, my choice of words, there were no hijackers. There were people that had been paid. Yeah, you can go out and hijack an airplane, make some demands, I'll pay you millions, you land, then you go back and have 72 virgins. That's not what happened. These, these young Muslim men, I'm fighting for them too, because they died after they were lied to by some city of London people, some Americans, and mostly some Canadians. These guys, here we go with the pedophiles.